Tech entrepreneur Elon Musk has topped Microsoft founder Bill Gates to become the world's second richest man after a meteoric rise in his personal fortune. According to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index, the Tesla CEO has added more than $100 billion to his net worth in 2020, propelling him from the 35th spot on the index up to number two. Most of Musk's wealth is tied up in Tesla stock. Instead of drawing a salary, he has been compensated in stock based on the company's performance. A decision that has paid off handsomely for him so far. Tesla shares, which have risen more than sixfold this year, jumped 4.6% on Tuesday to $546 a share, taking its stock market value to $517 billion. Musk, who owns 20% of Tesla's shares, saw his wealth jump by $7.2 billion to $128 billion on Tuesday. According to the Bloomberg Index, Amazon's Jeff Bezos remains the world's richest man. Finally, uh, you're obviously a very competitive person. You're competing with the likes of Jeff Bezos uh, in... Uh... Jeff who? <laughs> China launched its first lunar sample return mission, Chang'e, from Wenchang Space Launch Center, atop a Long March 5 rocket, on November 23rd. The spacecraft is designed to haul pristine moon samples and bring it to Earth in mid-December. After liftoff, the spacecraft separated from its boosters and protective fairing and went into an Earth-Moon transfer orbit. Five days later, on November 28, the 8,200 kg spacecraft entered into an orbit around the Moon. If all goes according to the plan, the spacecraft will send its lunar lander and ascent module to the lunar surface this week. Within 48 hours of touchdown at the landing site, Mons Rumker, a robotic arm of the spacecraft, will scoop up rocks and a drill will bore 2 meters into the surface to collect at least 2 kilograms of lunar soil. The samples will then be sealed into a container in the spacecraft. The ascender will then take off, re-enter orbit, and dock with the orbiter returner. Then the samples will be transferred to the returner, and the ascender will separate, leaving the orbiter returner to start the journey back to Earth. Before entering into the Earth's atmosphere, the return capsule will separate from the service module. The capsule will then perform a safe parachute-assisted landing in Inner Mongolia. Once the samples were returned to Earth, scientists will analyze the structure, physical properties, and material composition of the lunar soil to learn about the Moon's evolutionary history. From start to finish, the mission will last more than 20 days. SpaceX launched one of its Falcon 9 rockets for a record seventh time on Tuesday. The Falcon 9 rocket, carrying 60 Starlink satellites into orbit, blasted off from Space Launch Complex 40, marking the company's 23rd launch of the year and the 100th flight of Falcon 9 rocket. Two and a half minutes into the flight, the nine Merlin engines of the first stage shut down and the booster got separated from the second stage. Seven minutes later, the first stage landed on SpaceX's drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean, in a smooth touchdown. This marked the seventh successful landing of the booster B1049. Six minutes after the second stage engine shutdown, the 60 Starlink satellites were released to fly on their own. NASA has officially started stacking booster segments of its first heavy lift rocket, named Space Launch System, at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, ahead of its maiden flight next year. The SLS is the giant rocket that will send U.S. astronauts back to the moon this decade. Last week, NASA engineers lowered the first of 10 segments of the booster into place. Each booster, standing 54 meters tall, consists of five segments and will burn six tons of aluminum-based propellant each second. The two boosters together will provide 29,200 kilonewtons of thrust at liftoff, making up about 75% of the vehicle's total thrust. The first booster segments to be stacked are the bottom sections, known as the aft assemblies. These houses the system that controls 70% of the steering during the initial ascent of the rocket. The forward assemblies, which include the nose cone that serves as the aerodynamic leading edge of the boosters, will attach to the core stage when it arrives next year. Last week, a sheep counting expedition found a mysterious monolith deep in the Utah desert of America. Widely described as a monolith, the 2.9 meters tall structure appears to be made of stainless steel, riveted together into the shape of a triangular prism. Utah Department of Public Safety helicopter crew found the object installed in the canyon's rock floor on November 18 and found no obvious indication of its source. 
Even though the Department of Public Safety has avoided revealing the exact location of the monolith, Tim Slane, a Reddit user, pinpointed the coordinates of a small redstone canyon that closely matches the social media photos. Slane found the canyon with some clever cross-referencing, based on the geography of the location. A mid-2015 satellite image from Google Earth shows no trace of the structure, but it's clearly visible by October of 2016. Although the word monolith refers to a single great stone, the word has become closely associated with the monolith from the film 2001 A Space Odyssey, which the Utah monolith resembles. A new study conducted from the data collected by NASA's Curiosity rover suggests that floods of unimaginable magnitude once washed through Gale Crater on Mars Equator around 4 billion years ago. Using detailed sedimentological data observed by the rover, the researchers at the Cornell University found deposits left behind by mega floods, which had not been previously identified with orbiter data. The most likely cause of the Mars flooding was the melting of ice from heat generated by large meteor impacts, which released carbon dioxide and methane from the planet's frozen reservoirs. The water vapor and release of gases combined to produce a short period of warm and wet conditions on the red planet. Condensation of water in the atmosphere resulted in clouds, which in turn created torrential rain, resulting in gigantic flash floods. The raging mega-flood set up gigantic ripples in sedimentary layers of Gale Crater, about 30 feet high, and spaced about 450 feet apart. The long-lived bodies of water are good indicators that the Gale Crater was capable of supporting microbial life. Scientists can now predict when sunspots will emerge on the solar surface by listening to changing sound waves coming from the sun's interior. One of the challenges with sunspot prediction is that we can't put sensors directly on the sun's surface making the measurement of the magnetic fields that create sunspots difficult. But astronomers have learned that by studying the sun's surface's vibrations, which are caused by sound waves moving through the sun's interior, they can predict sunspots. The sunspot's magnetic field perturbs the acoustic waves, changing their signature. Measuring this change from Earth allows scientists to predict sunspots on the far side of the sun. With this technique, on November 18, scientists from the U.S. National Solar Observatory predicted the emergence of a new sunspot group. As expected, a fast-evolving sunspot has now appeared near the eastern solar limb and can be seen from Earth. This kind of prediction is extremely useful because large sunspots are often accompanied by other activities such as solar flares. Intense solar flares can disrupt modern satellites such as GPS, and in the most extreme case, could threaten to collapse our electrical grid. Predicting these events several days in advance will give us time to mitigate their effects.